Hey guys, you know, it's not like I'm spending hours and hours out in nature to keep coming across these beautiful events in my life. I've literally come out of the hospital because I'm not allowed to stay there at night where I'd like to be with my son. I come for a walk and straight away I, I walk into some deer by myself and they're hard to see. I mean, I'm in a strip of woodland in Hamburg and it makes me want to talk about the idea of shamanism and Christianity. Now, the thing about Christianity and the mystic side of it for me is the importance of having one true God. And the only way is via that one true God, so there's no gods before that. As in, you go to source. It doesn't mean that there are no gods in between you and source, because there probably is. Based upon Gnostic text, you have the eons, archons, then it makes sense. It's going to be complex in that spiritual realm. But just because you're going to source doesn't mean to say you have to be rude. If you've got a complaint at a shop, or if you need to speak to the manager of something, it doesn't mean you ignore the staff. And just because you want to go to the source of creation, I don't think it means that we have to ignore creation. And our brothers and sisters and the connectivity we have with nature is something so important. And thus I know that you can use shamanic practices, aligning yourself with nature to commune with that which we would call Christ. I know because I do it in my own life. And this is an important thing because in the West we're not shown that we're shown a certain framework for worship. But in actual fact, if you look at the people that we are worshipping, such as Jesus Christ, they went alone in nature. They went up on a mountain alone to meditate. And unless you try to do these things yourself and change the framework by which you worship, then I don't think you get a chance to get the direct experience that we seek or need, actually, I would say. And transformation is a necessity for all it's missing from the uh, predominant Western religions. The idea of transforming the person is not there. But transformation is a necessity. How can you become a better person? Or how can you become, in the realm of Christianity, a non-sinner to a person of service without transforming yourself? So you need these practical tools to transform yourself. And shamanic practices can help you to do that. You can be out in nature, you can align, you can attune, you can get right into the middle of yourself. And where easier, where is it easier to plug into nature, to plug into the present moment, which is where God is present, than out here in nature? So I think that shamanism and Christianity can play a wonderful role together. And as I say, if you understand that indeed there is one true source, it doesn't mean you can't be polite and pleasant and grateful to those when you're trying to reach the manager. And that's what I see here in this beautiful uh, part of Hamburg and everywhere where I go in the world. I'm always embracing nature first and foremost. I go and familiarize myself with the local nature. And I think it's not the first time that Western religion has needed it and indeed I think they've used it as well. If you look at the psychedelic gospels, some interesting work, I mean using mushrooms is a shamanic practice but these people were using it to find God. Monks were using it to find God and they were adjusting themselves into the present moment, into that mystic state of consciousness and that direct experience with God. But if you want to directly experience God and spirit and you get your mind empty, there's no better place than here. And things like that are my reward from God, always, I know it. I'm happier to see a sight like that this evening and very few people in the world will get to see it, unfortunately. And it's just a simple deer by a river. Well, it's a deer by a river in Hamburg. And it's a deer by a river that I happen to align with yet again when the locals struggle to see them. So I know that for me, it's a message from spirit. And the reason I can get these messages is I'm walking in a silent state of mind. And thus the subtle whispers, the same subtle energies that beat my heart and grow my hair while I'm talking to you now, can tell me that that little whisper, walk a little faster, walk a little slower, go that way, go this way. And I don't even have a conscious understanding that they're doing that, but they are. And because they are, 
I live in that dimension of synchronicity, which many people have started to call the fourth or the fifth dimension. But it's not. It's just your normal state. It's just that you haven't been living in it all along. Your normal state was always there. Normal human state was always there. Look to the tribes. I know from the indigenous tribes I live with that that is the normal state of human consciousness. To have interactions, communications with synchronicity, with spirit, with nature, with God. But we've come down out of it and now we think we're awakening to a new level. We're not. We're just going back to where we were supposed to be, some of us. So... I'm going to make a big video, I think, on shamanism and Christianity and Western religions in general and how there can be a union between Abrahamic religions, Buddhism, Tao, all of it, using shamanism. I very much see an opportunity for that because it gives you a direct experience of cosmic consciousness, which is exactly, and however you're doing it with breath work or with whatever, it gives you that experience and that is what is lacking too many people need to believe in god not enough people know god so when you know god you have real faith and as james said in the bible with true faith always comes works and there's not enough works on the planet that's why there's so much suffering so it tells me more people need to have a direct experience with god instead of just believing that god's there but always having that hesitation to act upon that faith because they're not 100 percent sure that that hand is there to catch them but I know it is, anyway. Right, I'm gonna get off. Keep turning around because of the light, but love you guys, God bless. Oh, Aslan's doing great. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe as it really helps us to grow the channel and with it help more children here in Tanzania. Also don't forget you can support our work by sharing with children in crisis here. Be it sharing for a particular need or even sharing one-on-one -on -one support for education, housing, food and medical care. It can be done for as little as the cost of a cup of coffee a week back in the west after all. Just visit www.sharetanzania.co.uk to find out more. Lastly, remember you can also support us via Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash feathers tail and help keep us here in Tanzania to continue our work. The links for the website and for the Patreon are in the description box of this video. Love and light guys, see you soon.